the Great Barrier Reef is in trouble. And that, look, that's probably the polite version. It's suddenly a global talking point. Australia, it's me, Ellen DeGeneres. As you may know, I'm a big fan of your beautiful, great, wonderful Great Barrier Reef, which is home to my favourite fish, Dory. And as you may remember, but Dory probably doesn't, she's a blue tang and has many other amazing species that live in the reef with her. It's critical that we protect this amazing place and we'd like your help. Help us, help Dory. Just keep swimming, just keep swimming. <laughs> Ellen DeGeneres, oh. Oh, she's blowing bubbles. Of course, she, yes, Dory from the Nemo movies as well as the TV. That message, that little video message sparked a Twitter war with Environment Minister Greg Hunt. To, to tell you the truth, I've always sort of rolled my eyes a bit when, when talk of, of the direst consequences of climate change seemed to always focus on the Great Barrier Reef. I mean, never mind the suddenly inhospitable swathes of various continents, never mind drought and flood and melting ice caps and rising seas and never mind the irreversible feedback mechanisms and the release of gases locked in the permafrost for millennia. All of that, extinctions, economic catastrophe, mass migration, war, famine. But not the Great Barrier Reef. I mean, it almost seemed to trivialise it. And then... well. Then the reef started to die. And to me, well, to me, that, that seems such a, a suddenly concrete manifestation of this moment, what it, what it might cost us, how the wheels of nature were turning. This year, 93% of the reefs that make up the Great Barrier Reef experienced some sort of coral bleaching. 22% of the reef's coral killed by warming waters. It seemed a suddenly potent symbol that the fragility of the planet, a snap to the, the concrete reality of what's happening around us. Dead coral, weed, algae, an ailing ocean and a, and a troubled world. No one knows reefs like Dr John Charlie Verran. He's a scientist and author. He's the former chief scientist at the Australian Institute for Marine Science. He's a, a man who rejoices in the nickname the Godfather of Coral. He joins us from our Townsville studio. Charlie, welcome. Thank you. You're pretty at home under the water. Uh, you could say that, yes. I've had about 6,000 hours under the water. And you've personally identified 20% of the world's coral species. I've personally named them, yes. Yes, I've identified most of them um, because something on a museum shelf doesn't tell you much. So we've got to turn that museum shelf specimen into life. That's taken most of my life to do that. When was the first time you dived on the, the Great Barrier Reef? A uh, very, very long time ago, it was um, 45, 50, nearly 50 years ago. In fact, it was over 50 years ago. I'm getting on, yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> dare I admit it? Yes. Could you, do you recall that experience? Oh, yes. The oh, sense abs of it? Absolutely. Um, uh, that was before scuba was popular, but then I started using scuba after that. And uh, so I have... Been on what, something like 67 expeditions, I think it is, and um, all over the world. It worked in every major coral reef region in the world. So it's not just the Great Barrier Reef, mm. but the Great Barrier Reef for me is this home, and um, it is the greatest of all the world's coral reefs by a long, long way. When was the most recent time you had a dive there? I was up at Lizard Island uh, just last month, one of the most miserable dives I've ever had in my life. Tell us why. What did you say? Well, um, <clears throat> the job... One job was I met a film crew there and they wanted me to talk to a student under underwater with full face mask uh, explaining some of the technicalities of coral taxonomy. I said, sure, fine. And uh, even with the aid of the uh, resort there we and the research station, we couldn't find a patch of coral for me to do that. It's all dead. And so having gone to Lizard Island regularly for 40 years... That was quite horrific. In fact, it almost, I don't want to get into the water again. It's that bad. Tell us about coral biology. I mean, why is it so sensitive and, and sensitive to what? Well, um, corals are made of carbonate, um, calcium carbonate. They live on a knife edge of competition to produce skeletons fast enough to outcompete everything else that grows mm. on a reef. And so they 
produce a form of, of uh, calcium carbonate called aragonite, which is uh, quite soluble in seawater, and also it makes the coral very vulnerable to temperature issues. And we're now experiencing temperature, the likes of which they've never, even in their um, evolutionary history, they've never come across, and it's killing them. And it's killing them worldwide, not as you say, not just mm. in the Great Barrier Reef, but all over the world. And it's because corals have this extremely unusual job of creating, building reefs that are home for roughly a third of all species somewhere in their life cycle. So corals are really the cornerstone of marine biology, of marine life. In the past, we've had um, major injections of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere from volcanoes, and that's killed coral reefs all over the world, and they've stayed dead for thousands of years. Hmm. But we've never done it at the rate um, that we're doing it now. We're fast outstripping, by a long way, any volcanic existence, except going right back to the time when a huge asteroid hit the Gulf of Mexico and that finished off a great deal of marine life and it's best known for killing off the dinosaurs and so on. <laughs> so reefs are, are sort of a canary in the coal mine. They are exactly the canary. They are exactly the canary. They're the early warning um, canaries. Um, so what, I wrote a book about this. It was published um, over a decade ago. And uh, from that book, the Royal Society in London called an emergency meeting. It was chaired by Sir David Attenborough and uh, Googled all over the world. And at that meeting, I gave uh, the forecast that science said of what was going to happen. And unhappily, that forecast is exactly correct a decade on. And that's, that's pretty horrible. So what's happened now is, well, it's not news to me. I've just been waiting for it to happen. And I'm afraid it's going to happen over and over again. We're talking with Charlie Varon on, on Sunday Extra. He's, he's probably on the world's leading authorities on coral, on reefs. And Charlie, we, we talk about that canary in the coal mine. I mean, the problem with this particular canary and the effects that it detects is that they have an incredible lag, an incredible lead time, that the, the effect we're seeing now has accumulated over a long period. That's correct, yes. And yes. having seen the canary go toes up in its little cage... The, the the changes we might make to, to help that situation will likewise take a long time. Well, we're coming into equilibrium uh, with about the uh, temperature conditions of about the mid-1990s. So we've got a long way to go before we get into equilibrium on today's carbon dioxide levels. So no matter what's injected into the atmosphere, this is going to keep on keeping on damaging reefs. And for as long as we burn the fossil fuels, I'm afraid this is just going to get worse and worse and worse. So is it too late to save the Great Barrier Reef? Um, I can't say that. Um, it's too late to keep it uh, anything like the state it's in now. So it will, it will continue to degrade yes. regardless of what we do from this point? It will continue to degrade. What we have to do is uh, to get technology hooked in to get our reliance off fossil fuel quick enough to um, avoid the very worst of it. Uh, the prognosis is really horrible, and certainly not just for coral reefs. Hmm. I'm afraid the gloomy side is that we are looking down the barrel at a, a mass extinction. and that's of the, the creatures that create the coral. Of and the everything creatures in the ocean. That then... The oceans, uh, the ocean life, which is going to flow on to terrestrial life. It really is very, very serious. We can't prove that. The evidence for it is, is, is very strong. So the mass extinction could be our own, ultimately. Absolutely, yes. I mean, um, there'll, there'll be people listening to that who say, well, you alarmists. Yes, yes, you can call me an alarmist. And I think after that Royal Society um, meeting, um, newspapers did call me an alarmist. And, uh, well, I'm afraid I was exactly on track. And uh, what we've seen now is certainly no surprise to me. The surprise of anything is that it didn't happen uh, many years before because we've had a very unusually long break in the El Nino weather pattern, mm. uh, which um, pushes temperatures to above normal levels, uh, normal being the abnormal conditions that all the oceans have now. 
So we just have to wait now for the next El Nino cycle, and um, we will see it all over again. Fortunately, this time, the local weather pattern, by local I mean all of Queensland, uh, changed around about February, and that saved the uh, central and southern Great Barrier Reef from major deterioration. We had a uh, virtually a normal uh, wet season. But for most El Ninos, that hasn't happened. It's brought major droughts, major fires uh, throughout the, uh, the whole of the uh, tropical world. And so we got off lightly this time, despite the horrors of the whole thing. This works in two, two ways, is it not, that the, the changes through global warming? There's, there's acidification, changing ocean chemistry. And, and yes. Now, ocean acidification is pretty straightforward. The chemistry has been known for um, a century or more. So when you get uh, acidified, uh, carbon dioxide dissolves in, in the uh, ocean surface and alters the pH. Now that causes aragonite to dissolve and the corals can't, the larvae can't attach themselves to rocks because they can't lay down their first little layer of, of uh, skeleton. And then when they do, if they do, uh, that skeleton won't grow properly. They sort of got a mm. coralline osteoporosis, if you like. And um, that will kick in severely around about uh, mid-century. And, then and the, when, the, when that happens, it's all over. And the bleaching we hear so much about? Well, the bleaching will get worse. It has to get worse. I mean, there's no plan B. The bleaching will depend on several factors, temperature being the main one, but also you have to have a lot of light. And so when you get uh, abnormally high temperatures, uh, such as associated with uh, El Nino cycles, uh, and plenty of sunlight, then bleaching will happen. I'm afraid it will. And uh, it's just ghastly to see. It really is horrific. And we're in an election campaign and, and, mm. and people are making various promises of, of money and interventions and, and, and things that might be done. How much does that underestimate You know what, what actually needs to be done? What Australia has just recently done is given the Adani company uh, the rights to mine coal, which will put uh, three and a half billion tonnes of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. It was the most negative, ill-thought-out thing you could possibly do. Um, Greg Hunt has got all sorts of little tactics to um, get around the very obvious, and we can't get around them. That was a very serious thing for Australia to do. Straight after the Paris Agreement, hmm. which didn't even mention that, so we're, we're one of the worst countries in the world now. I think there's a couple of um, uh, Eastern European countries who are worse off than us or more contributing than us to climate change, but we are the worst of all the developed countries. And we're doing absolutely nothing about it. Nothing. Every other country is, except Australia. You're about to attend the International Coral Reef Symposium in Hawaii. Yes, I'm launching uh, a very, very big website that we've been 10 years building. Well, this is what I wanted to ask you. This is the Corals of the World website. Yes, um, yes. It's like uh, the book that was three volumes, but it's expanded to would look like about 20 volumes if it was published, printed. Uh, but it, it will be easy to get to. It will allow any user to quickly get to a huge amount of information very quickly. And uh, it's something that I felt I've just had to do. And we've been at it now, as I say, for, for 10 years. It's a record of something, though, which is in ultimate decline. Uh, well, it's going to be, it's, I'm afraid it's going to be a, a record of history, more than, more than what is. So a virtual reef may soon be the only reef. Well, no one now, no matter what, the, how much money, how much resources they have, no one now can see what I've seen in, in my life. It doesn't exist. I mean, that's a horrible thing to say, but it doesn't. And this um, website, at least, will provide very factual information. It, so decisions won't be made on opinion, they'll be made on facts, and that's tremendously important in science. Can we save the world's reefs? That's, the, I guess, the, the final and ultimate question. Well, if we go about getting off coal very, very quickly and getting on to uh, renewable energies... Uh, it will make a huge difference. But we've got to stop coal being dug out of the ground because 
all the coal that's been dug out of the ground, it'll just make it worse and worse. And all we will be doing is making the children, the generations of the future, we'll be handing them a, a devastated planet. I'm afraid it's no way around that. You can call it alarmist, you can call it whatever you like, but the facts are there. And I'm, all I'm doing is, is relaying facts, not any personal uh, vendetta. Charlie, thanks for your time. Well, my pleasure, if you can call it a pleasure, and thank <laughs> you for hearing me. <laughs> Dr. John Charlie Verran, he's a scientist and author, the godfather of coral. Uh, and as you've heard there, putting together an extraordinary... Uh, online epic corals of the world is the website, and that'll be launched at the the coming coral reef symposium in Hawaii, the thirteenth international symposium, uh, later in this month. Sunday extra here on RN. Jonathan Green with you. <laughs>